Tonight, Shay and I are out here doing a little wood identification. What kind of wood do we think it is, Shay? We think it is... We think it is... Chinese elm. Chinese elm. And this is the thing that I'm making that I'm about to, like, do some stuff for my vacations on. And he's got a project tonight as well. Now this is a branch off of a much larger tree that came down on uh, some school grounds. It was being cleared. The old elementary school here in town. And we're kind of split on what sort of wood it is. It's definitely some sort of elm. Now some folks believe that it's the basically extinct Dutch elm, which would make having cut down these mature healthy trees uh, more or less a tragedy. And some folks feel that it's uh, Chinese elm trees that were planted to replace the Dutch elms when the Dutch elms died. Regardless, it's pretty hard wood. The outer bark is attached very, very well. And the, the growing layer, the cambrium, is really thick in this. It's got to be an eighth of an inch thick. Then you have some, some inner wood, which is a white creamy color, although it, it fades to this sort of muddy kind of tan rather quickly when exposed to air and then the heartwood is this sort of dark chocolate kind of color but if it's just when the chocolate watch when i scratch it what do you think that means that's wet it is this wood is soaking wet this is surprisingly heavy, much heavier than it looks here on the table. Much, much heavier than that, and it is. It is just soaking wet. In fact, the only way I was able to sand and smooth a corner for us, a corner for us to identify it, was by uh, hitting it with a hairdryer. So what I'd like to do is get in there close and look at the grain structure, and maybe we can identify for sure, once and for all, have we got Chinese elm? or the much more rare Dutch Elm. All right, you want to come see Buster? So, because this is so wet and everything else is going on. Why are you bloody, Daddy? Uh, I cut myself. Because it's so wet and everything else is going on, when I tried to sand it, all I did was pack the grain structure with some schmoo. So what we're gonna do is we took a razor knife blade and we basically planed a section there, and that's going to let us look inside the wood. Can I take that for a second? Now, hopefully, if you come over here, Shay, you can get to see the results. Alright, so here we've got, you know, the seasonal heartwood growth. Okay, and this would be, I believe they call that a ray fleck interior wood. This is the ring porous right here. This is the tree's vascular system that allows it to move nutrients and moisture throughout the tree itself. So you can see if we go over here, this stuff, because I sanded it, you couldn't see any of that. So we know we're looking at sort of a, a ray fleck wood with ring porous. And we should be able to, and hopefully I've got the sophistication to have it on the screen right now, somewhere maybe over here, should be able to compare this wood image with that of Chinese elm and that of Dutch elm and any other elm species we can throw in there and figure out what we're looking at. I believe we're looking at Chinese elm. That's what I believe. I believe these trees were planted after the great Dutch elm die off. And what I'm going to try to do with these logs is split them on the table saw. Uh, I haven't got the room to push them all the way through, so I'll try running it across the blade. And when I'm done with that, finishing it up with a hand saw, and when I'm done with that, we'll let them dry. And if I'm able to split this right down the middle, I'm going to be able to dry it, aren't I? You can pound now. Can you hear me pound? I'm sure they can hear them pound. They can hear